Okay, so I'm going to cover part two of water. We're going to talk a little bit more about pH. We're going to talk about how much, and we're going to talk about when. So let's get right into it. We discussed a lot about pH in part one, but I specifically wanted to mention something that I didn't mention in the first one, so I'll do it now. And that is the alkaline water that people are either making at home with their units or they're buying in stores. Because you might think that I subscribe to the idea that you should drink alkaline water based on the fact that I talked a lot about minerals and how minerals in water is important because in our bodies we are full of minerals in a water solution and the more minerals the more alkaline you are. All that's true and um, so people have taken that one step further and they have said you should drink alkaline water that you can make with these machines. Uh, Kagan is one of the machines, if I'm saying that right. And that particular machine can go as high as at least 9.0 in the alkalinity scale. Your blood pH, by the way, is about 7.4, right in that area. So that's quite a bit more alkaline than your blood. And your body wants to keep your, your blood in that certain level. It's somewhere between 7.3 maybe and 7.5 or 6. So right in that range, your body is going to try really hard and do everything it can. It has to keep your blood in that range. And it will take minerals from wherever it can get it, from your bones if it has to, to make your blood as alkaline as it needs to so it can carry on the processes that it has to do so you can survive. So the idea is, well, the more the better, right? And so they're selling these units and you can buy them in the stores for alkaline water. Well, um, you might be able to guess how I feel about that. Um, I'm actually not 100% for or against it. I'm highly suspect at this point that it makes any sense. I, um, I subscribe to the idea that spring water, as mentioned in the first video, being that it is mineralized naturally from moving through deep underneath the earth in a natural way, that that is more natural to our bodies. And that water generally is, when it's tested, is generally a little tiny bit on the alkaline side, not 9.0, but in the 7s still, sometimes maybe 8. I'm not sure if I've seen an 8.0, but right in that area. So real close to what your blood pH is. Now, let's think about this. I'm not going to get into the whole alkaline issue as a whole, but if we're talking about water, you need to know this, that your body, like I mentioned, your blood wants to be in a certain range. Well, certain other parts of your body aren't gonna, aren't, don't need to be in the same range. Your body knows what needs to be in, a, in, in what range. And your blood serum, your, your serum, needs to be in that range, and your body is going to um, try hard, to, to, like I said, to, to keep it there. Well, what about um, your, like for a woman, let's say, uh, the vagina? That's not supposed to be an alkaline environment. It's supposed to be an acidic environment. Another example is your stomach. You do not want your stomach to be alkaline. Your stomach should be acidic. And people are popping HCL pills because, especially as you get older, because you've, lo you've lost the acidity in your stomach. Food will not pass out of your stomach, it doesn't want to pass out of your stomach unless it reaches a certain acidity. And if your body is not making enough acid in your stomach and it does decline as you age, then your food's going to sit there longer and this could, we could go into so many other problems from there. So when we're talking about water then, so if you're drinking real alkaline water purposefully, like 9.0, you're paying big money for these machines, you're drinking it and it's hitting your stomach and it's alkalizing your stomach. 
That seems counterintuitive to me. I don't see any proof that these high alkaline waters make a difference in health. I haven't seen that. It doesn't do anything that I've seen to hydrate you more. Certainly we don't want to be drinking distilled water, as I mentioned in the first video, every day, unless you're drinking only so much of it because you have so many, and I know people that have so many fresh fruits and vegetables that are very alkaline and that are very high in minerals that they can, they can do that. So everything depends. However, if you're drinking alkaline water, you're, you're taking down the stomach acid. And you might find that you have some digestive issues because of that. So that's something to consider when we're talking about pH. Would I spend the money? Absolutely not. Not on high pH water. I think it would actually be detrimental. So I would stay away from that. That's my opinion on it. Now, I did mention last time about how much, too. The eight glasses of water a day. Where did that come from? I don't know. So they might say, all right, so, and by the way, I did say half your body weight in water, half your body weight in ounces <laughs> of water. It tends to work out pretty good. So how about this? How about the idea of instead of measuring out how much water you should drink in a day, how about you go by your thirst signals that you just drink when you're thirsty? Novel idea. <laughs> now, with that said, I will say that most people don't know what their thirst signals really are unless they're so parched that it's so obvious that they need to be drinking some water. So this is what I generally tell my clients. What I'd like to see, and this usually makes a shift, some kind of shift for people, is to get your thirst signals appropriate during the day. There's something you can do at the beginning of the day that seems to set the stage for that. Not only that, it also sets the stage for not being dehydrated. When you wake up in the morning, you fasted for at least like six hours, let's say eight hours, you're, you're, you haven't been ingesting any liquids. And so you're going to wake up in a semi-dehydrated state. That's totally normal. But what do most people do? They might grab a coffee with caffeine in it that's more dehydrating, a caffeinated tea that's more dehydrating, or grab a glass of milk with a muffin, not very hydrating, or even just the fact that you're putting food in your stomach first. So the suggestion I give to my clients is drink at least 16 ounces of mineralized water, spring water, hopefully, on an empty stomach, however long that takes you to drink it. For myself, sometimes it takes me an hour, sometimes it takes me three hours. It just depends. Well, I drink more than 16 ounces, though. I drink at least 20 ounces. I drink until I feel like I am not dry anymore, and I just... I, I, I'm very in tune to my body at this point, and so I kind of know how much I need. Some days, 16 ounces is all I pretty much need. But if you do that in the morning, you'll find that, first of all, you, you're rehydrating those, those tissues. Um, you know this because if you drink 16 ounces of water, you're not going to pee 16 ounces or even 8 ounces in two hours because your body is just rehydrating. It's going to get your digestion going a little. You can even put a little squeeze of lemon in there. That's a great idea. So then have your breakfast after that. Then during the day, have water available to you and drink it between meals. This is going to go into when a little bit. So drink it between meals, not during the meal, when you feel thirsty. And start to get to know the difference between being thirsty and being hungry. Maybe if you think you're hungry and it doesn't seem logically to be a time when you should be hungry, drink a little bit of water and just see how you feel first before you eat. So the when is, it kind of goes back to pH a little bit too. When I go out to a restaurant, I never drink, I never order a beverage. They always want to give me water, and if I say no, they look at me funny, it's fine, bring me some water, and it just sits there. I won't drink it anyway because it's usually tap water. But 
I don't, I'll maybe drink enough be, a little beforehand, a few sips to take what pills I have to take or during the meal, uh, digestive enzymes if I'm doing that at that particular time. But I won't drink a glass of liquid with my meals because I don't want to take down, uh, make my uh, digestive juices, in, in my digestive juice, that's real scientific, right? <laughs> take down the um, acidity in my stomach by washing that, that through and all those good juices that you've, you've been creating uh, after your last meal is just going to be diluted and you don't want to do that, especially as you get older, it gets harder. So between meals is the time to drink your liquids, drink your water. So that's pretty much what I wanted to cover just to kind of iron out some of the things that I didn't cover um, in the last video and especially give that tip for better hydration. Try that out. If you Make these two changes of drinking at least 16 ounces of water in the morning on an empty stomach and drinking between meals, not during meals, and changing your water source to fresh spring water so that you can bring in a, a, a water source into your body that is pure and clean, then I think you're probably going to see a big difference in your health. And for you, that could be less hunger during the day, that could be less joint muscle pain, that could be better sleep. You just never know what, how your body is going to react to a positive change like that. So thanks for watching. This is Terry Lynn with Live True Coaching.